Hello, welcome to my video about cloning a WordPress website to a local host for testing, development and for safely updating plugins or other software. So we're doing this because WordPress plugins as well as the other software can break. So if you update a plugin, the WordPress core, if you update a framework, there can be unforeseen situations in which you're faced with the white screen of death and that is where you just get a completely um, white screen and that could be due to a, a plugin incompatibility. So what I suggest is that as a business you can't afford downtime and you really want to test your updates in a local host which is a offline server environment where you can run an identical copy of your public website. So what we'd do is we'd clone what you see here and reproduce it in the local host. And for that, we'll be using WAMP. Other local hosts are available, but WAMP is a very good option. It's free for one. The local host is also good for general development and coding. So if you're a developer or designer and you have a client and they want modifications made to their website, you can use a local host as a safe way of testing those changes rather than uh, fiddling with the, the live public version of their WordPress website and risking problems. Download WAMP, go to wampserver.com slash en, that's the English version of WAMP. Download either the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version and install it. And by default, it will be installed to C Drive. C Drive, there's a folder there called WAMP and there's a folder there called www. So you can create a new folder, give it a name like test or whatever. I'll call mine small biz web tips and what you want to do now is start up WAMP so click start WAMP server say yes I've actually already got a, a, a copy open make sure that it's green if it's amber or red it hasn't opened and you might have to troubleshoot why that is if you do have any issues go to smallbizgeek.co.uk slash WAMP I've made a guide to installing it with screenshots Open up your favorite FTP client and access your top level directory and copy the entire contents of your website over to a folder on your computer. I've got a folder, I've created a folder called Small Biz Web Tips and this is where I back things up like the database, a directory, I've also got images and what have you. Copy it all into the directory, a folder called directory, and then open up WP config, edit with Notepad plus plus, and make sure that the username is root and that the password is left blank and that the host name is localhost. I changed this earlier on. I've left um, the database name as it is. We'll be coming back to that in a minute because we'll need that. Next, you want to access PHP MyAdmin on your web host. So log into your web host and access PHP MyAdmin. And you want to select the database associated with your website. For me, it's backup test 251. Go to export, make sure that all the tables are selected, select SQL and choose to save as file. Your version of PHP my admin might be a bit different but in principle we're just downloading the SQL file. Click go and you'll be prompted to save it. I've created a folder called database and I'm going to be saving it there. So I'm going to append PHP my admin onto the end of that just so I know that I downloaded it from PHP my admin it's just something I like to do because I also like to download a copy of my database using something called putty which is an SSH terminal so you can tunnel into your server and you can download in my opinion a much cleaner 
copy of your database. I have less issues, um, less import errors and things like that. So let me just do this. Okay, so I've just tunneled into my Linux server using PuTTY. It looks a bit complicated because it's all plain text, but if you're interested in knowing how to do this, go to smallbizgeek.co.uk slash PuTTY, that's P-U-T-T-Y. Your database is dumped by default into your user folder in your remote FTP directory, so not your public HTML folder, but the one that's just above that. Copy that into my folder, which I've called database. So I know that that one's PHP my admin, and that one is zipped up, and that was dumped using SSH putty. Left click the WAMP icon and click local host and this is the home screen of WAMP and you can see I've got PHP my admin and PHP info it also says your projects um, that folder there small biz web tips that was the one that I created a few minutes ago so what we want to do is grab this directory and copy that and put it in there let's just double check that wp-config has everything correct yeah so we need to grab the name of the database copy that and we want to access php my admin and we want to create a new database so click new give it a name click create successfully created click the database go to import choose a file and we're going to import the database dump that we created earlier on i'm going to create i'm going to choose that one that i created using ssh because i prefer it to the php my admin dumps so click open and go it's only a small database so it won't take very long let me just open a new local host type forward slash and then the name of your project your folder that's small biz web tips Okay, it's the same page not found because we haven't replaced all the internal links. So we want it to look like this with a, a, a home page that says this is a test. Our version hasn't got that because we need to, it, it's still referencing the, the remote links. If I hover, if I hover, you can see that it's saying smallbizwebtips.co.uk. That's where this very handy script comes in because this will take all your remote server links and replace them with the local host links. It's a free script. It's interconnectit.com. But if you go to Google and search find and replace database interconnectit, one of the top results should be for that very script. So you want to download this. I've got a copy of it. There it is, search replace DB master. Um, so I will grab a copy of that and I will go into my small biz web tips folder inside the www directory in WAMP and I will paste that and I will extract it. Say OK. I'll delete the zip because we don't need that. And I'll give it a simple name like SRDB, SRDB. Okay, can you see that? Right, so back to our local host. Local host small biz web tips slash SRDB. And then click the SRDB. Okay, it's 
got the correct name of our database. It's got the correct user, which is root. Password is blank. The host is localhost. The port is 3306. And we want to search for the remote URL, which is http colon slash slash www.smallbizwebtips.co.uk forward slash and we want to replace that with look with http colon forward slash forward slash localhost slash smallbizwebtips remember to include the trailing slash on the end so we're swapping one url out for another you can click dry run and this will simulate the tables and the rows and the cells which it's going to change. I'm now going to click live run. It will say are you absolutely sure to run search replace. Make sure you're back to yeah I'm fine with that. The other thing you should do is run the script again only this time when you put your remote URL into the box up there instead of having the uh, trailing slash take the slash off the end so delete the slash off the end and the same with the local host URL delete the slash off the end so you're running the script twice and uh, the reason for that is if if you don't there could still be instances of the remote URL inside your database. So run the script twice. OK, now what we want to do is visit your WP admin area to get into the dashboard. So, to localhost slash morbiz web tips slash WP admin and sign in. I'm just using very basic credentials to get in. You want to go to settings now and uh, permalinks and just click any, just click and then that's not to change the uh, structure, it's just to flush the cache. And now we should have an identical copy of the website. So that was the original site, and this is the copy. Let's check that those images have got the local URL and they're not still referencing the remote server. Yeah, there you go. Look, see. Okay, so remember also to delete srdb search replace database delete that folder because you don't need that let's go into wp content themes let's have a look through the style sheet because i'm not sure that that script that we just ran actually gets anything in the style.css because that script was a database script this is in the wp content folder let's do a search for small biz web tips any instances of our remote URL no well there aren't any you are um, there aren't any in the style.css it's just that sometimes I use a background CSS rule and I use a, an absolute URL to reference an image or something to put it in the background of a CSS container so that's something that you should do make sure that your your style sheet is using the local host URLs. That's it. I mean, that's all it is to it, really. Uh, run the updates. So inside the local host dashboard, we can click update now. Update. I'm sure it, it'll be fine. There'll be no issues. But it's good practice to do this anyway. I mean, I, I back up one of my websites probably twice a week because I'm blogging a lot I'm writing a lot of pages and what have you so uh, thousands and thousands of words hundreds of hours of work I want to be damn sure that I've got a working copy of that on my computer in WAMP
what I can tell you is that once you've got everything set up, you've got your WAMP folder soft set up, you've got your www folder, all you've got to do every time you want to update is import the latest copy of your database into the WAMP PHP my admin and um, keep your your WP content folder up to date. That's where all your plugins are kept. So when you update your plugins, make sure that that folder is kept up to date. If you're adding new images to your live website, you want to be sure to remember to copy those over. What I tend to do is I just delete the uploads folder and then just download a fresh copy of the uploads folder and it just replaces everything. What you could do is you could just delete the WP content folder and then just, you know, get the latest version of WP content and copy it over. So there you go, that's how you do it. I hope this was useful and I hope that you will update on a regular basis. Give yourself the peace of mind to know that if your website ever, your public website ever does go down, then you can easily restore um, the, the copy that you've got on your computer. Thanks for watching.